Hey, this is Ralph. I don't continue working on that slide spot navigation menu that we uh, started up in that previous video. This is what I've got so far. There's really not a lot to it. Uh, on my HTML, I've got a reset rule. I've got a rule controlling my unordered list, giving it some width and height and border and position relative. Very important declaration. Then I've got a rule controlling my list items, floating them to the left, setting their width and height. That gets that makes a horizontal navigation menu, basically. The border here is just so you can kind of see what's going on. I'm going to be getting rid of that border um, pretty soon. And of course, the anchor tags within my nav menu, I've set them to display blocks so I can set their width and their height and make them button shaped. My anchor tags are a bit smaller width and height compared to the list items that contain them. I've given them a visible border with border radius, text align, text decoration, font size, and line height just for aesthetics, and margin just there to help them line up all nice and neat. So that's kind of what I have in order to create this navigation menu. If your goal is for a horizontal navigation menu, you are there. Um, I want to format this blob, and if you forgot what the blob is, jump back over to my code here, jump over to my HTML file, and basically on my navigation menus there's this little span inside of my unordered list, and it's classified or class equals blob. I need to make this blob so that you can see it. So back on the CSS, scroll this up a little bit, and uh, basically it's dot blob. display block. Now since I'm using an inline element, a span, I'm going to use display block to make it a block element. Now if you're smart, and you probably are, you're probably saying, Ralph, why didn't you use a, um, a div for this? I could have, and maybe even I should have, but I didn't. I used a, uh, a span that I'm converting into a block element. Give it a little background color. Set its width its height and its border radius. So by setting its width and height to 50, that makes a square. By setting border radius to half of that size, that'll make it a disk. Okay. Little box shadow action going on. So with box shadow, First number is your X offset, second number is your Y offset, third number is your blurriness, or your, you know, fading out the shadow, and of course this last number is the color. So my little box shadow. Very important here. So my blob is position, you got to spell it, it's even more important to spell it properly, is position absolute. And this corresponds with the position relative of its parent, which is the unordered list. My blob is a child of the unordered list. I'm going to position it absolutely. And uh, I'm also going to do this, z index negative 1. Okay. Now let me show you what will happen if I didn't do that. So let me just save this. And I'll jump back over to Chrome and refresh. So we can now see that blob, but it's on top of my list. I don't want to see it on top. So Z index negative 1 is going to force it behind the scenes. I want that blob to be in the background, not in the foreground. OK, and the last thing I'm going to do for this disk is for the aesthetic part of it. Um, but basically, I'm going to do a Moz transition effect. Now, I used left as the measurement, because basically, I'm going to be changing its positioning, its position from the left. So I did left here. You could also do the word all, OK? But I'm going to do the word left. 500 milliseconds, that's how long I want my animation to take. And I'm going to choose ease in out. I think that looks pretty nice. And I'm just going to duplicate that line a couple times. One will be for Moz or Firefox. We'll have WebKit for Chrome and Safari. And I'm also going to throw an O in there for Opera. So and I and I have heard that IE10 will support this. So good yeah, it's good to hear. We won't see the impact of this yet since I'm not repositioning. But otherwise things are going pretty well. And that takes care of the blob. Now the next part to change is the location of the blob disk in relation to each page that I might be on. Okay, So what I mean by that is when I am on 
page one, I want my disk, my blob, to be literally right behind the item one menu item. When I'm on page four, I want the blob to be right behind the middle item four list item. So I'm going to have to adjust the positioning of this pink disk for every page that I can be on. I've got a five page website, so I had to do this five times. So I'm going to indicate page one space dot blob. This is a descendant selector. Okay, descendant selector. There's a situation. Let me go to my page one HTML. My body is uniquely identified. ID page one, pound sign page one. Within page one, I want to manipulate where list item one is. Okay, pound sign item one. I'm sorry. So Sorry, not the item one, but the actual blob down here. The blob within page one, its location. So let's go ahead and get that. So my blob within page one, where do I want it to be? Now I don't have to do position absolute because I took care of that up here on my rule for the blob. I just have to say, where do I want it to be? And um, I'm going to say, I want it to be five pixels from the top and 21 pixels from the left. Now you could be thinking, where the hell are you getting those numbers from? Because I did this already, okay? And I try, I did trial and error left and right, trying, trying to find numbers. So let me save that, head over to my browser, watch when I refresh, and that kind of centers that blob right where I wanted it. And maybe you can even adjust a little bit more from the left. Oh, by the way, part of it's gonna look a little bit off because I've got these borders. The border wasn't part of the finished product. So if I were to get rid of the border on my list items right there, centers up a little bit better but still uh, we can alter those a bit more so there's my blob one all right so once I've got that location I'm actually just gonna repeat this several times here okay so I'm just gonna control I'm in notepad plus plus control D a few times page one page two page three page four page five and on page two my numbers are 117 on page three, oh, close enough, 212, page four, 307, and page five, 402. Okay, so I'm controlling the location of the blob for each of the five pages in my five page website. So now when I head over here and refresh, page two, it's in the right spot, page three, page four, oops, I wanna zoom in. Yeah, let me just zoom in a bit so they're all kind of equal. Three, four, and five. Okay, so now I'm zoomed in, and you can see that that's not too bad. That at least gives me an active indication of which page I'm on. Head back over to our code. So that takes care of the blob location. Let's see, let's also do this. Page one. Item one, anchor. So what is this going to do? This is going to control the border of the anchor of the list item of the active page. Okay, so that one's pretty easy to do too. And if I just duplicate this, two, three, four, five, page two, page three, page four, page five, item 5, item 4, item 3, item 2. This is going to give me another visual indicator of the page that I'm actively on. Basically my active page is going to have the little disk blob and it's also going to have a dark red border. So if I save this, head over my browser, refresh, there we go, got that dark red border. Active page, active page. So a little bit of overkill there for us. Jump back over to the code. What else can we do to this? Let's see, let's go ahead and change a hover status. Let's do, let's do list item, item one, colon, hover, anchor. So that's a dark shade of green. I'm gonna duplicate that five times. And let's see, we're gonna have items two, three, 
four, five. Now so far, you might have only been using the hover pseudo class to correspond with anchor tags, but you can hover over all kinds of stuff. You can hover over list items, you can hover over images, you can hover over divs. So now, I'm hovering over a list item and I'm going to manipulate the anchor tag that's inside of it. How am I going to manipulate it? I'm going to change its border color again. So this is saved. I go to my browser and refresh. So now when I hover over, and notice I don't even have to get to the anchor tag. I just need to hover over the list item. So when I hover over that list item, it's going to change that border color. Next on the list is really the most important part, and it creates the ultimate effect. So I'm going to go ahead and control list items by item. So I'm going to do list item item 1 colon hover. Then I'm going to do a tilde symbol, okay? Tilde. That's a shift left accent. Blob. So this is a precedent selector, and it's going to manipulate the blob that is preceded by a list item, in this case list item 1, assuming they all have the same parent, with which they do. There's also manipulations with this. You can do child selectors, but it's a little bit longer, so this is a precedent selector. Now what I'm going to do with this blob is I'm going to locate it top 5 pixels, left 21 pixels. And this positioning is going to hold true whenever I'm hovering over list item 1. I'm going to do a couple other things here. List item, item 1, active, precedent selector, blob, and this is going to, ch I'll change the background color. And one more, list item, item 1, active. This is actually going to change my list item. Color black and let's see font weight bold. There we go. So that is an important step. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this chunk and I'm going to duplicate it five times. So I've got it on here five times now. Let me zoom out just a little bit so you can see all five at once. There we go, so I've got all five the same, and now I've just got to update them. There's item two, item three, item four, and item five. And the, really the important thing I need to change is the positioning, which I already really know. Um, my second one is 1117 pixels from the left. My third one is 212. Fourth one is 307. And my fifth one is 402. Okay, so basically when I hover over item two, my blob is going to reposition itself 117 pixels from the left. Where was it before? I don't know and I don't really care, but when I hover over list item two, I want that blob to be exactly 117 pixels from the left. I go ahead and save this, head over to my browser and refresh, and you'll start to see the effect. There we go. Now the delay in that effect, of course, is caused by our transition, our CSS transition. I'm hovering over my list items to trigger this. Just to re-emphasize, put those borders back in there, you'll see the blob start to move as soon as I hover over the list item. I don't actually have to hover over the anchor tag. And of course we could slow that blob down. Instead of 500 milliseconds you could make this a full two second animation. Then it just goes a lot slower. I like the faster action myself. But there you go. So let me just go ahead and undo those back to 500 milliseconds or half a second. I'm going to take that border off of my list items, save it, browser refresh, and the illusion is complete. So, and of course, if I click and hold down, my blob changes from pink to light blue, and I get a little bit of text change too. So, there's your slide spot navigation. Use some uh, creativity and think of different ways you can apply this kind of technique. Take care.